Good day and welcome to the exciting world of computers. This multimedia teaching tool introduces you to the computer system, central processing unit, and the input and the output devices. This is how a computer works. The information will go through each component in order to be processed and developed as the output you require. This is the overall organization of a computer process. In this topic, we will look in detail the computer components and its functions in the computer system. A computer consists of a variety of hardware components that work together with software to perform calculations, organize data and communicate with other computers. Simply put, a computer is a machine more accurately referred to as a computer system consisting of hardware and software components that works together to accomplish specific tasks. Let us first look at the hardware of the computer and their functions. All modern electronic digital computers, whether mainframe or micro, consist of logical hardware units. Observe the organization of the hardware as displayed. Click on each device for detailed explanation. As we have explored the hardware in a computer system, now let's move on to explore another important part of a computer system which is the software component. Software or programs is the series of step-by-step -step instructions that cause the computer to perform a task. Hardware is worthless without software. No matter how sophisticated the hardware, it must have instructions for it to be useful. Software used today is very user-friendly and complex. We can perform multiple applications with ease. It allows us to use a program with a click of a mouse button. There are two types of software used in a computer system. They are system software and application software. Click on each type of software for a detailed explanation. The first thing that is activated when you boot your computer is the system software. It is operating system that runs your computer and allows you to use the application software. Your computer cannot function without systems software and your application software cannot perform unless there is system software in the computer. More than likely, the system software you are using and are familiar with is Windows 98, Windows 2000 or Windows XP. There are many brands of system software, but at this time, Windows is the most used on desktop computers or PCs. Some system software, to name just a few, are Visual Basic, Bolan C++ and Turbo C++. System software has many important functions in the operation of a computer system. When we first boot up our computers, the initial instructions for the computer are stored in ROM or read-only memory. These instructions perform what is known as POST or Power on Self-Test, checking the power, the memory and the necessary peripherals or it will let you know if it does not detect a keyboard and the boot will not continue. Then, the system is sent to the hard drive to find the hidden system files and command.com file to put them in RAM or random access memory to operate the computer for us. System software not only operates the computer, it also has many other functions. Among them are control of input or output, manage storage, maintain security, 
passwords, audit trails, detect equipment failure, allocate system resources if you are multitasking, provide utility programs, format, scan this, backup, etc., device drivers, software needed for each hardware device, translate, programming language interpreters or compilers, communicate with the user, and allow application software to use system commands to delete, save, or etc. It is clear that without system software, a computer will not be able to operate at all and the application software will only be functioning after the system software is in place. Application software comprises programs designed for an end user such as word processors, database systems and spreadsheet programs. It performs a specific task or application. Application software sits on top of system software because it is unable to run without the operating system and system utilities. In this topic, we have looked at the main components of a general purpose computer. When you open up a computer, you will be able to see various components of the computer. The components of the computer is divided into two categories, hardware and software. Hardware is the components inside and outside the computer which you can actually touch, such as disk, disk drives, display screens, keyboards, printers, boards and chips. In contrast, software is untouchable. Software exists as ideas, concepts and symbols, but it has no substance. However, hardware without software will be of no use to us. So, a computer can only function smoothly and be useful to us if the hardware component is integrated with the software components. Computer is an important component for most of us in accomplishing our daily task. At times, for certain tasks, the computer does the thinking for us. How is this possible? Does the computer have a brain of its own? Yes, the computer has a device similar to the brain that processes the data keyed in to produce the output required according to its settings and programming. Can you guess what this device is? Yes. It is the central processing unit or better known as the CPU. In this topic, we will focus on the components in the CPU and its functions. The CPU or central processing unit is the central component of the computer architecture. It is a highly complex extensive set of electronic circuitry that executes stored program instructions. It is a control center that converts data input to information output. CPU is the brains of a computer. Sometimes it is referred to as the processor or central processor. All computers, large and small, must have a CPU in order to be able to function. Click on the Hints button to know more. What do you think CPU is made of? CPU comprises of millions of microscopic transistors imprinted by chemical and photolithographic processes into polished silver silicon about the size of your thumbnail. These tiny transistors store electrical charges that correspond to ones or zeros the binary language computers use to communicate. Groups of transistors are linked to store values. They also perform logic and math, and they paste their functions in a synchronized mode to process data with the help of a quartz crystal clock. Click on the hint buttons to know more. The CPU is the most important element of a computer system in terms of computing power. In fact, it is in control of all operations that are performed on computers. 
There are two major components in a CPU. They are the arithmetic logic unit or ALU and the control unit. Each of these components has their specific functions. Click on each of the components for details of its functions in the CPU. There are also other CPU components that ensure that the operation of the CPU is smooth. Among the components are internal clock, registers, and memory and storage. Click on each of the components for a detailed description. Each CPU has an internal clock that produces pulses at a fixed rate to synchronize all computer operations. This clock generator regulates each of the actions the CPU performs. Registers are temporary storage areas for instructions or data. They are not a part of memory, rather they are special additional storage locations that offer the advantage of speed. Registers work under the direction of the control unit to accept, hold and transfer instructions or data and perform arithmetic or logical comparisons at high speed. There are different types of registers in a CPU. They are accumulator, address register, storage register and general purpose register. Click on each type of the register for a detailed description of its functions. Memory is the part of the computer that holds data and instructions for processing. Although closely associated with the central processing unit, memory is separate from it. Memory stores program instructions or data for only as long as the program they pertain to is in operation. Keeping these items in memory when the program is not running is not feasible for three reasons. Click on each button to know the reasons why it is not feasible to keep the program instructions on data when the program is not running. A CPU processes information stored in bytes of memory. That information can be data or instructions. The CPU performs three basic operations on data. It reads data, it manipulates that data, and it often writes that data to memory. At the simplest explanation, the CPU needs only four elements to perform its data operations, instructions, an instruction pointer, some registers, and the arithmetic logic unit. The CPU consists of other additional parts that help the basic parts do their jobs, instruction fetch, instruction decoder, and the control unit. 